All right. Good afternoon. My name is J.P. Blake. This is Chris Rogers. Uh, we'll be presenting our work towards virtual disk integrity in real time, or because that's a mouthful, what we call VDIRT. At a high level, our project consists of extensions to Zen's Disk I.O. interface, BlockTap 2. Our primary goals were to extract faster and finer integrity guarantees about DOMU virtual disks. So first, we'll go over our motivations for this work. We'll cover some related efforts, go over our implementation details, and uh, wrap up with a few small video demos. So in high assurance environments, we want to know what the exact state of the VM we're starting. We can use hardware extensions to bootstrap trust by way of a measured launch of the overall system, but we care about extending that chain of trust to guest virtual hard drives. Now, when we started this effort, the main focus was on scaling the measurement of boot time integrity to larger drives. However, as we'll go into more later, with those hooks in place, um, the capability is also there to provide continuous monitoring. Um, we all know that those security goals are wonderful, but we know that they can't come at the expense of usability. So our foremost concern, and what we really wanted to prove out during this, was that we could minimally impact um, the performance of virtualized disk I.O. So disk and file integrity are obviously not new topics, um, but there are three related efforts that we're most interested in. A Zen Client XT, my apologies to the enterprise guys, uh, Tripwire, and uh, iNotify. We drew lessons from XT's handling of boot time integrity measurements and tried to improve on its performance. Along the way, uh, we realized that we could also approximate the basic file integrity checking and work towards the functionality similar to that offered by Tripwire and iNotify, but with a different set of security guarantees. So let's review XT's architecture first, because it's the product environment that we're most interested in targeting. So Citrix Zen Client XT is a security conscious a client platform developed in conjunction with the Air Force Research Lab. And using the separation that Zen provides with VTX and VTD, um, XT is ideally suited you know, as a middle system. XT has also taken some great steps towards the desegregation of DOM0 with dedicated network domains and stub DOMs. And using Intel, TXT, and Tboot, XT executes a measured launch as a protected partition whose keys are sealed uh, to the platform state so that it can be encrypted offline. And XT uses the VHD format uh, for all of its VMs. And it was because of our interest in the XT product that we kind of honed in on that. Even though, I mean, as you'll see when we go along, a lot of the ideas are general and could be um, less specific. So XT has some unique extensions to traditional Linux FS layout. Um, we want to talk about this just briefly um, because some of the VDIR enhancements uh, rely on this layout. So slash config is an encrypted protected <coughs> partition um, that uh, is encrypted with the keys that are put in a sealed blob that can only be decrypted when platform measurements in the TPM match the known good state. Um, when we discuss the VDIR implementation, we'll describe how its keys are expected to be stored in this location. Uh, slash storage holds the virtual hard drives for both guest VMs, for the service VMs, obviously unencrypted, and the rest of DOM0 is measured in mounted read only. That's the Linux and enforcing. So going over XT's measuring process. Um, on the boot of a measured VM, such as the network domain, uh, the tool stack measures the VHD's corresponding tap device um, by way of a SHA-1 sum. And then it compares this hash against the known good hash of that VM's VHD that is stored in the config partition. Depending on if they match, if they don't, it'll for, uh, follow the corresponding policy. So moving along to Tripwire. Um, Tripwire is your classic Unix file integrity checker. 
And it's a tool that will run at the application level inside the target environment. Uh, when it's initialized, it creates that database of system object information. It's basically hashes of the files. And this amounts to snapshot the current system state. It compares the result future object scans, um, generally ran on a cron job, uh, against the existing entries in order to detect changes. And then it can notify the user admin. Um, so I notify was added to the Linux kernel a while back. And it was basically that subsystem to support monitoring of file system events that could be reported to applications. It really amounted to that real-time file system monitoring, but also from within the target environment. So um, a shot sum for the entire disk, very coarse-grained. I mean, it really only lets us know if anything on the disk has changed. It's coarse, but it's definitely a good starting place. Um, what's unfortunate is that hashing those big drives is really pretty slow. XT skirts around this problem by using open embedded based service VMs, which result in a much smaller drive uh, to measure, as opposed to using Debian Wheezy. However, we don't always want to be forced into using an embedded distro. Um, Tripwire and iNotify have their applications and usefulness depending on the threat model. Um, our threat model is different in that we do not want that integrity monitoring code to execute in a potentially compromised host. So having explained what we see as some of the limitations in XT and Tripwire and iNotify, our goals really aren't too surprising. So we're looking to achieve a faster equivalent of a SHA sum on a tap device to belonging to a guest disk. We also wanted to make progress toward um, providing a DOMU file integrity monitoring tool from DOM0. With that, I'll hand it over to Chris. So first, I'd uh, like to begin just to discuss some of the high-level uh, design goals of Ethert. Um, first, we, we felt that supporting the uh, dynamic VHD format would be most effective uh, for our tool, uh, mostly because uh, its ease of use you know, within XT and the basic structure of uh, the VHD uh, was just easy to work with. Um, so we did have to make some changes uh, to the VHD format, um, such as adding our list of hashes that we'd like to track um, during the course of VM runtime. Uh, and I'll go into those in more depth uh, momentarily. Uh, in addition, we had to make some modifications to BlockTap uh, to actually implement the tracking scheme. So with the, so the idea here then is instead of incurring this large performance penalty uh, VM boot time, uh, we can just amortize this bottleneck by measuring over the course of uh, the VM as it's running. So really, you know, the core of uh, VDIRT, it's, it's really pretty simple. Um, it's very, very similar to Tripwire. Uh, when the DOMU invokes a read, uh, VDIRT intercepts the data before it's sent back. Uh, to the DOMU, and it compares the stored hash uh, for that particular block uh, with the hash of the recently read block. And then uh, similarly for the write operations, uh, the block is hashed, um, it's committed to disk, and then the list of hashes is updated in memory. Uh, if, of course, the uh, VM is allowing writing to disk. So um, understanding uh, block tap call can just be a little tricky. Uh, so I just want to take a quick uh, pass through um, typical block tap call. Uh, block tap 2 is disk's Zen IO interface. Uh, and so first we have the back end establishing itself in the DOM uh, 0 kernel. And using an event channel or shared memory ring, we can communicate with block front in the DOM U kernel. So then an I.O. request would pass from the user space to the kernel space, uh, and then it's redirected to DOM0 and block tap. 
once this request uh, reaches the block tap in the back end, uh, it's forwarded to the tap disk utility, which is responsible for uh, dispatching it to the correct um, I.O. library. Um, Blacktop 2 is nice in that it supports a variety of uh, custom disk interfaces and it even allows you to write your own. Uh, so VDIR could be extended in the future beyond just uh, the VHD format. Uh, once the read or write is complete, the data is sent back to the shared memory ring for the DOM you to utilize. So here, uh, I just want to take a quick moment to talk about our terminology uh, for our tool. Uh, can get a little confusing. Um, so the default VHD block size is going to be 2 megs. Um, that's what we worked with. Uh, the DOMU default file system block size is 4K, and BlockTap also handles data at a granularity of about 4K. Um, so we call the DOMU blocks uh, sector clusters, just to avoid the confusion when referring to them from the BlockTap perspective. <coughs> And here at the top, the hash list is just an array of SHA-1 sums that uh, represent the present hash of any given DOMU block. Um, they're mapped one to one. And so earlier I mentioned that we had to end up modifying the VHD structure. Um, I understand that's uh, an issue in terms of extensibility. Um, oh boy. <laughs> Can we? Yeah. Can you get that? Or? All right, so I guess the format's a little off. All right, so in gray here, you have the, the typical VHD format um, as defined by the specification. And in green, you, we have our uh, header that we've added to the, to the metadata here. And so uh, what we'd like to show you is there's one, two, three, four, five um, sections of this, what we call the hash header. The first one is an entry. Uh, it's simply the absolute byte offset from the beginning of the file, uh, beginning of VHD, to the next uh, piece of metadata. So in this case, the header. This is just implemented um, similarly to the other pieces of metadata here in the VHD structure to quickly traverse uh, the VHD. The second entry is simply a number, uh, is the total number of hashes for ease of use um, with our computations. Um, third entry is just a simple flag. Uh, we feel that uh, VDIRT should be enableable or disableable without needing to recompile Zen itself. So, um, and then the fourth entry uh, is our list of tracked hashes uh, that we're going to uh, store across the lifetime of a VM. And the last entry is a pad, just to keep it 512 byte aligned. Um, so obviously the list of hashes can get quite large if we're, you know, hashing each of these uh, DOMU blocks. So storing them all in memory quickly becomes a problem, and I'll uh, talk about that momentarily. Okay. So this slide was uh, intended to sort of trace through uh, a VDIRT block tap call. Um, I'm actually going to go back. Well, this diagram is in our paper. I'm sure we could just walk provide that. So I'm just going to walk through it. Um, very similar to the normal block tap call, except once the uh, VHD is created, future reads and writes through the tap disk utility are going to be measured. And so once we're down inside uh, block VHD, when a disk rate is scheduled, uh, we determine that it's a write, and then using global and block offsets, uh, we compute the proper index uh, for this block in our, in our hash list. Uh, and then we hash the block of data that's going to be written. And the index and the hash are both stored inside the IO request uh, data structure, which is then shipped off to the AIO library. Um, we let the IO happen, and then on the callback uh, for uh, which is VHD complete, uh, we then update our hash list because we know that the write has completed, and uh, that we need to keep the hash list and the disk blocks in sync. Um, when we verify a data read, we also compute the sector cluster index, 
Uh, but we don't hash anything because, well, we don't have anything to hash. So we just allocate space um, and we let the uh, I.O. happen. And then on callback, that's when we verify the read. Um, and uh, just simply compute the hash of the data that was read and then um, compare it with the hash that's being tracked. And policy uh, can dictate whether or not to stop VM execution or simply print out a warning to the user, inform the user that some sort of integrity um, uh, has been violated uh, with the disk. So obviously, you know, this list of hashes that we're tracking uh, in the VHD metadata is, you know, sensitive information. We want to encrypt it. Um, and since we're targeting here Zen clients uh, or XT's environment, we expect that protected partition uh, to exist and uh, be a place where we can store our decryption key. Um, so in order to guarantee the integrity of the hash list, we encrypt it uh, before writing the changes back to disk. And uh, that way, the next time the VM or the VM is booted, a failed decryption will result in um, an automatic integrity failure if, say, the uh, list was tampered with uh, in an offline state. So in order to maximize performance as well, VDIRT uh, is only designed to commit these track hashes on VM shutdown. Um, so we realize that in the context of, say, a power interruption, it's going to become a concern. If the interruption is malicious in nature, um, such as an attempt to modify data to circumvent some read verification, uh, VDIRT will still you know, detect that invalid data the next time uh, it performs a read because the clusters and uh, in memory and the data on the disk are out of sync. And that's great. But if the power interruption is coincidental, um, then you know, the VHD should not necessarily be marked as compromised. Uh, so we could you know, use a simple flag to just indicate a proper hash commit. So really with VDIRT, we set out um, to achieve a faster equivalent of hashing the entire disk, uh, similar to XT. You know, and we did, um, simply by tracking the measurements of each individual disk block and then hashing that entire list for a single unified measurement. Um, as far as uh, watching specific files, we've, we have a demo uh, to show you um, where we've hard-coded uh, the block addresses of these files um, just as a very simplistic case to sort of show this capability. Uh, and in the future, you know, we see a lot of potential that could, uh, VDIR could help with um, implementing a uh, honeypot type of virtual machine or um, analyzing, you know, the disk footprint of malware. So performance is a huge concern for us. Um, so you know, uh, SHA summing a block 4K, you know, quickly adds up in memory. For a one gig disk, uh, we have a hash list of five megabytes. Um, that's not bad, but if we keep scaling up, there's eventually going to be some bloat. Um, and uh, I'll be showing you some performance data that we measured. Um, it's for a very simplistic case, just reads and writes. Um, <coughs> let's see. Uh, um, right, so the, here you can see sort of the scale. Uh, if we have an 80 gig disk, um, we're going to have a hash list of about 400 megs. And as you keep increasing the size of that disk, that hash list can get larger and eventually could become a, uh, a memory issue. Um, also, you know, throughout this talk, you probably noticed we've been a little hand wavy about policy details in terms of verification or, or handling failure. Um, VDIRT really is in the prototype stage right now, um, so we don't have a full policy engine implemented. Uh, but we thought it was worthwhile to, you know, point out the opportunities where policy could dictate the correct op uh, option to take. All right. So these are just it's just a graph of uh, comparison between. VDIRT and native open source Zen uh, for a synchronous I.O. workload. Um, modified, our VDIRT implementation is the darker graph and the, or the darker bar and the lighter bar is native. As you can see, there was not um, 
very much of a performance uh, penalty um, when using or when doing these simple I/O tasks. Uh, similarly, this is the bandwidth uh, for each of these tasks as well. Cool. So I'll show you a couple quick demos. Okay, so you're looking at right now how we ported uh, VHD util to basically take out our tracked root hash. We're just going to fire him up. Um, on the right hand side, we're kind of tailing where Vdir is logging, you know, different messages. You can see between, uh, I love VLC, um, what it's seeing as root hash. You're seeing it match up right now in the real time log. We booted this VM just uh, read only, and then we're just going to detect when it's remounted read write. As soon as we do that, we're going to see a lot of action on the VDIRT log. And once he shuts down, we're going to see you know, his last um, root hash match up with when we call VHD util again. Um, really, the VHD util call is going to be the analogous action to you know when XT makes its tool stack call you know to measure it. Um, so that was really the main the main goal. <coughs> then we're just going to see our root hash over here match up. So. So the second video here is where we're actually um, watching a specific file inside the DOMU. Again, on the left, we have that DOMU booted up, and on the right, we're in DOM0 tailing that log. So we have the file we actually care about watching. Um, obviously, right now, very file system, context specific. We're going to just move him over, um, and what we are doing in the back is you know, we determine the block offset addresses for the inode and data for WatchMe, and that's what we're tracking. So your simple moves to inode. Um, this is where we're actually messing with the data that we're watching. And oops, VLC capturing at its best. Um, and then again, kind of like your, your Trojan idea, you're just going to replace that file. And again, that's something you're going to detect to simply no change. We sync up and catch that as well. So. And there you have it. Thank you. Oh, oh yeah. There you go. <laughs> Questions, anybody? No. Everybody's ready for the coffee break. <laughs> <coughs> Did you look at doing using something like Merkle hash trades to enable you to do the effectively have a chain of hashes all the way up to the top to enable you to do things rather more incrementally? Yes, we did actually. That was our initial uh, choice uh, for this data structure. But as the as we started uh, experimenting with larger disks, that quickly became uh, impossible to maintain in memory. So uh, short of implementing a caching scheme for this hash list, uh, we found that the Merkle tree was just too um, large in scope. Introduced a lot more overhead than, than what we really needed tracking all that. But, but that was our, our thoughts, too, when we started out. Yeah, I mean, I guess for what you're doing, you don't need the, uh, the incremental consistency right. which yeah. it's able to give you. So I think, you, I think more than it's hard, but I think you could make it work. Thank you.
So you're effectively doing lazy integrity checking of the disk, lazy. right? Instead of doing it all at once, you're doing it as the pages get read or written for the first yep. time. Yep. So I'd expect there to be a significant performance overhead if you were to read a file for the first time, a large file when it's coming up. I mean, did you do any kind of performance evaluation like that? I mean, when we staged the VMs initially, you know, from the get-go, it's <coughs> with the block tap instrumented with VDIRT, and there's really no extra time for doing you know, like an install of the Wheezy VM you saw. So there's no, you know, just common, common usage. We couldn't see, you know, a big hit uh, to performance. And that's, that was like the main question that we were seeking to answer. Thanks. Yep. Any, uh. <clears throat> so nowadays, AppStream Xen mostly use QM as this backend. Uh, do you think it would be hard to port your work to uh, QM? That is another, basically, uh, provider of uh, this backend in user space. So that was kind of what I, I was hinting at when we started out. It's, I mean, reader itself, very general idea. Like, oh, we're going to intercept, you know, the call kind of in transit. Um, again, our use case, we're targeting XT, so we just kind of dialed in. Um, I guess I'm not as familiar with, you know, the QDisk and KMU kind of backends to, I would hope not, you know. Anybody else? I seem to not. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for the call. Thank you. Thank you.